It's a little hot and humid right now. We could see some scattered thunderstorms tonight. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy and about 80 degrees. We'll have those full weather updates for you later on in the 6 o'clock report. WVTT's top international story today, the operator of the nuclear power plant that had a meltdown in Japan last year is in the hot seat yet again. CNN's Paula Hancox has more on a new government report about measures taken by Tokyo Electric Power Company and its Fukushima plant. The reason that the devastating nuclear disaster last year at Fukushima's nuclear power plant was not predicted is because the plant operator and the government believe in, quote, the myth of nuclear security. Now this is the assessment from a government commissioned report uh, basically saying that TEPCO and the government believe that such a severe accident could never happen in a Japanese nuclear power plant. The assessment of TEPCO today is uh, not exactly any better. The report says that the plant operator is not aggressive enough in trying to find out the cause of the accident and also not aggressive enough in trying to make sure that it will never happen again. So three out of four reports that we've heard are critical of TEPCO. In fact, the only one that wasn't was TEPCO's own internal report. But more crucially, what happens next here in Japan? Tens of thousands of anti-nuclear protesters are trying to sway Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda and the government as they prepare to make a decision on medium-term energy policy next month. Tens of thousands of protesters have been gathering outside the Prime Minister's residence every single Friday. Now, anger is increasing on the streets. The number of people calling for a nuclear-free Japan is growing. There have been calls for more hydroelectric or more coal-fueled power stations, which is obviously a, a more long-term project. And also, some protesters claim that blackouts are preferable to nuclear energy. Remember, there were a number of blackouts across Japan last summer. Now, the Prime Minister can't help but hear these dissenting voices. They're right outside his residence, but so far he hasn't managed to be swayed by them. Earlier this month, he authorised the reactivation of two power plants here in Japan, saying simply that it was necessary because the country and the economy needs the energy. Paula Hancock, CNN, Tokyo. European Union foreign ministers arrived in Brussels today for a meeting to discuss the situation in Syria as well as other international issues. After a bloody weekend in Damascus, violence erupted in Syria again today. A foreign ministry spokesman at a press conference fielded questions about the security of chemical weapons and weapons of mass destruction in Syria. He said the weapons are meant to be used in the event of external aggression and would never be used against the Syrian people during this crisis. The Arab League says it will offer Syria's president a safe exit from the country if he resigns quickly and leaves. It also called on the opposition and the Free Syrian Army to form a government of national unity. Jury selection for the high-profile case of Drew Peterson started today. The 58-year-old former Chicago cop is charged with killing his third wife, 40-year-old Kathleen Savio, in 2004. Peterson is also under investigation for the 2007 disappearance of his fourth wife, 23-year-old Stacy Peterson, but has not been charged. A 200-person jury pool has been waiting for per Peterson's trial to get started for three years. Peterson was arrested in 2009 and pleaded not guilty. Opening statements are scheduled to start next Tuesday. Cough is sweeping the nation. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, so far this year, nearly 18,000 cases of whooping cough have been reported to CDC, which is more than doubled from last year at this time. A CDC spokeswoman also said that the number of reported cases could be the highest nationally in over 50 years. The state of Washington has been hit the worst, and a state epidemic was declared back in April. The Washington State Secretary of Health stated that in July of 2011, there were just over 200 cases. Now there have been more than 3,000. Some sports updates with our very own Derek Smith right after these short messages.